Hey everybody, hey. welcome to Sunday Tea Book episode 33. We're back with uh, an exciting episode. Um, scented and blended tea. So uh, I mostly see. Mostly scented. Yes, mostly scented. <laughs> Actually, I think, is it just scented? We'll see when we get to the book. Scented tea, super excited for that today. I have to make a confession though. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit, before going over the chapter, I was a little bit like, oh, scented tea. You know, we try and discourage black tea stigma because all the teas have really great there's all there's something great about them all but after reviewing the scented tea chapter i'm really excited about scented tea Me it too. is a lot uh cooler like i you know we're gonna learn some stuff today we're gonna have a lot of fun and let's say hello to everybody on instagram and on youtube Let it, oh already letting us know what's in your cup that's yes. awesome guys Ju Ju is uh, having some uh, Mong Shan Mao Feng. Mm. and uh, fernanda good afternoon oh josh is saying Xin Nian Kuai Le. And go <laughs> see To you too. Happy uh, Lunar New Year. Nice. Lolo, hello. Simmerjeet. Uh, Igor, hello. And Beirong Hakami, hello. T friends and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, everybody. And oh, Simmerjeet is brewing some Ying Hong number nine. Nice choice. Nice choice. Love that tea. In addition to, to celebrating <laughs> Chinese New Year, let's also celebrate the fact that I'm finally on time. Mm. <laughs> Great job. Great job. All right, cool. So guys, we're back with Sunday Tea Book episode 33. Um, for those of you uh, new to Sunday Tea Book, wait, let's t cover the tea first. We usually talk about the tea first. I got a little bit out of order. I okay. guess there's no order, but... There's... <laughs> anyway, let's talk about tea first. Let's since talk you about guys the tea. Already tell us what you're having. And we are going to brew a uh, jasmine green tea. I'll throw up the brew cam for you. Mm -hmm. And then I'll throw up a little look at the tea on the website. Whoa, I'm all confused. I'm all confused. Okay, for those of you on uh, YouTube. On YouTube, yeah, there's the close-up of the leaf live there's with us. There's a consistent uh, suffering. Mm. suffering. Oh, there it goes. Oh. There it goes, really nice. You can see it really mm. focus on here. Da, 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 da. Really pretty. And I'll give you guys a shot of the website on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. For those of you on Instagram, here's, here's a look at the dry leaf. Of the dry leaf. I'll kind of plug Make in. sure I don't pour that on the right. keyboard this time. Hello, Andrew, on Instagram. I'm, we're just showing off the dry leaf mm. of the tea we're brewing today, which is Sugong Cha, an exquisite, uh, an exquisite scented green tea from Sichuan province made by Mr. Sua, the inventor of this particular tea. Um, a little bit about what's unique about this tea is the process that he developed uh, preserves very well preserves the fresh green quality of the tea as well as the fresh scent of the jasmine and when we smell the dry leaf there's no question about that right away so that mm. is um we're gonna get it's in actually a perfect tea mm. not only to mm. sip but for today's topic because we're gonna mm. talk about yes. real scented tea vis-a-vis -vis counterfeit scented tea yes. and the teas with flour in it or not so uh, it will be really interesting topic. Yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's really fascinating actually. I, it kind of opened my eyes to scented tea just going over this chapter. Hello, Zach's Fresh Graham Shesh, Sesh. Oh, that's a mouthful on Instagram. <laughs> so what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where uh, Jen and I go over uh, a book, paper, or an article that is rich with good information or great information about Chinese tea or its culture but it's not available in the West either because it's only written in Chinese or it is uh, the translation leaves something to be desired. Mm -hmm. So we go over that with you. We're gonna bring it up on the screen and review it. So everybody on Instagram, you might wanna head over to the YouTube side so you can participate in that. Um, and it's where you guys get to help us out. And I've got some stuff where we're gonna lean on you guys today specifically, okay, for some help with translating words. And then you'll see, stay tuned for that. Right. And uh, as usual, the full uh, translated version is on our website. The link is in the description in, on YouTube. Be sure to click it on. Click it on. Uh, click it open because there's mm. lots of uh, uh, certain words that is uh, T terms is hard to translate it directly in a good way. So I mm. put the Chinese uh, the Chinese characters there. So uh, yeah, uh, be sure to check the link. Yeah, much like, yeah, so um, that's a really good tip to open that up. And um, of course, we always like to warm up 
with what do we like to warm up with? Do I get any hype on the oh, YouTube right. side? Is anybody, is anybody hype for what we're gonna warm up with? Hey, hello from Tennessee. Johnny oh, Moy is here, hello. Fernanda is here. I don't know if I said hello. I just wanna say hello to everybody. And Lolo as I, well is having Osmantis in Taiwan, Oolong. Oof. Oh, Lovely. and Beirong just ordered the last copy of China Tea, I believe, this book in English over at Purple Culture. Mm. Oh, this, cool. this book is actually writ has it English and Chinese. I think that's the one you'll probably get. I don't know how many What's editions. Purple Culture? Uh, I guess it's a store or something near his place. I don't oh, know. Cool. I'm so glad you have the copy of this tea. That would be much easier. Book. Oh, copy book. of this tea? Copy of this book. Book, book. <laughs> this book, China Tea. I, th I feel like I keep mixing up a tea and book a lot. <laughs> oh, Cindy's got a jasmine green rocking today, but she had to sneak into her husband's stash to acquire it. She's not <laughs> such a fan, but perhaps you can convert me. Yes, and Josh is yelling out for some trivia hype. So guys, without... Uh, oh, I got to say bye-bye to the Instagram guys. YouTube guys, hold for one second. Hold, we're coming up to tea trivia. Instagram people, we're gonna do tea trivia. Hey, Rita, Rita just joined, but we're about to close off on the Instagram side, so I'm gonna say bye-bye to Rita and Zach and Andrew, and we will see you hopefully on the YouTube side. We're gonna dive into scented and blended tea today, but first we're gonna do tea trivia, so rush over so you can answer all the questions and have fun with us. Bye-bye. Do you mind if I put on the tea? No, game? no, not at all. Thank you. Dun, 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 dun. Big sun? Yeah, let's do the big one. Yeah. So, uh, so today we're gonna brew in a glass, or and or and a guy one okay uh which one are you having i'm gonna go with the guy one i one think it'll be fun well, it's a great way and because uh, because himself also drink that from guy one that's how uh, people drink uh, green tea and stuff in uh, sichuan province and i'm gonna have a glass uh to brew in which is a really great and a common vessel if you're brewing any like green teas and jasmine teas and you can really enjoy the leaves okay and he already i guess he already made his mind before this started because did, there's leaves in it i don't even have a chance to warm up the uh guy one but oh, if you, you can, hasn't um, put uh, the tea in it a suggestion mm -hmm. is your glass warm yeah oh, oh, oh got you yeah precisely Da, 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 da. All right, so We're that's doing done. this. Okay. I don't compromise, guys. I had it planned everything. Are they the same layer of weight? Did you same amount. Yep. They're both weak. So we've got three grams in each vessel. Mm -hmm. The the flower is so fresh. So it's so ironic right now. We're we're having a freezing cold day today but sunny and bright. So the flower with the sunny and bright is working, but the bright white ground is kind of contrasting <laughs> outside, covered in snow. Oh boy, that's nice. Is Jasmine. there any difference? Identity teas? This is... Hmm. The, that, the glass has the, as you might expect, the, the shape, shape of the glass is concentrating that jasmine aroma. Mm, it has a little bit of uh, curve mm. up. Yeah, yeah, really lovely. Oh boy. I remember being in Sichuan uh, on our tea trip in 2018 it, at Mr. Su's uh, house at his villa or whatever you want to call it. He's got a beautiful house with a beautiful garden. But we were sitting around the table and the tea was out and he's an old, an old friend of your mother and yourself, right? So they're chatting away in, in um, Chinese super fast. I'm getting about every 25th word or whatever my understanding will allow but then the tea gets poured and everybody's got a guy one and I was so didn't know what to do I didn't know what to do at all so uh, I just wait till Mr. Su and your mom start to sip and I see how they do that and I did that everything okay yeah, I just wanted that to focus on this as I pour anyways mm. doesn't matter mm. so uh, as usual we use boiling water Simmer Feel juice. free to lower water temperature if you were having any other one. Bitterness or astringency. Yeah. Drop her down. So the thing is, is I cannot sip that right away, but I'll uh, I'll get to it in a minute. I think we can Pretty. head over. Oh, you. Yeah. Want? Let's do the tea trivia. <laughs> All right. So here we go, guys. I see uh, Cindy is screaming for it. Josh is screaming for it with a whole bunch of starry eyes. Here we go, guys. It is. Oh wait, I got to do something first. There, it's a little bit of clicking before <laughs> I can just launch straight in. How to, many questions do you have today? Uh, regular. I got the regular amount of questions today. And um, 
Here we go. T trivia time. Woo, yay, the crowds go wild. Here we go. Oh, yes, and uh, Betty just scooches in under the wire for T trivia. You've still nice. got 18 seconds while I give you a little intro. So, T trivia time, right? Oh, yeah, let me just do this. It's all about having fun. I got some goofy questions and some goofy answers and it's just gonna be fun. Actually, today I went with a botanical perspective. So they might seem a little bit official because there's Latin, but it's all about having fun, guys. Just take a guess. Okay, so first one, a nice warm up. What is the botanical name for the tea plant? Is it one, Camellia sinensis? Is it two, Camellia sinensis? Is it three, Physialis <laughs> franchetti? Or is it four, Centauria cyanus? All right, so it sounds like a, a spaghetti kind of thing. Fiziali Franchetti. It sounds like an, maybe an Italian restaurant chain. Yeah, yes. Right? Franchetti. Come on over to Fiziali's Franchetti for the best pasta you'll ever have. Josh says, I have a super Chinese New Year Day going today. Haha, <laughs> doing same, Ooh, nice. some Valentine's Chinese calligraphy for my parents. About to make some tea and enjoy the stream. Awesome. Oh, I was going to suggest, actually, before I forget, tons of people coming in with two. I don't see any other answers here. Goodness gracious, I didn't fool anybody here. I tried a clever misspelling of Camellia sinensis. I did saw somebody do S-U-S. -S. I yeah. was just wondering. Me. Oh, it was you. It's me. That's my common misspelling of Camellia sinensis. I thought it was like a plural. Uh, Josh forgot to answer. You still have time, Josh. Hit it in <laughs> real quick. It, it'll pick up the first few seconds of this phase. But the computer is going to tabulate your answers. I've got a little bit of extra information. Uh, for those of you wondering, Physialis Franchetti is... Uh, is um, I can't even read my writing. But Centauria <laughs> cyanus is a cornflower. You all got it right. Way to go, guys. You know how to spell Camellia sinensis. What is that other one? Coplant. Okay, sorry. I don't know what uh, Physialis Franchetti is. It is not an Italian restaurant. All right, time for the next question. The Camellia is the state plant for this U.S. U.S. state. I should have said U.S. because I know you guys are from all over the globe. So the camellia is the state plant for this U.S. state. Is it one, Alaska, two, Florida, three, Alabama, or four, Kentucky? So we had somebody from Tennessee. If you're from any of those states, give us a shout out. If you're not from one of those states, let us know what state you're from. And if you're not from the United States, let us know where you're from. It's always fun to have you guys joining us. So we've got some... Uh, Oh, Josh says, oh my God, so automatic. Oh my God, wow, holy heck, you guys, it's so official. <laughs> very oh, he official. never saw that. He's always late. Oh, Josh <laughs> is blown away by the new trivia format. He's going with two. Florida, good guess, Josh, good guess. Fernanda also coming in with two. Johnny Loy, two. I think you've influenced the crowd, Josh. Um, but she says uh, she doesn't know. Betty comes in with number two. Uh, this is um, Fernanda is guessing. That's the way to go, guys. Just take a guess. It's all for fun. We're all going to learn. I learned something. I had no idea Camellia was the flower for any U.S. state. Right? Everyone's guessing two. I guess based on the last answer, which was two, that's not a bad way to hedge. Let's all go with two. Nobody's going to... Everybody guessed two Yay. and everybody's wrong. It is Alabama, if you can believe it. I didn't it. know that, but I somehow crossed out Alaska and right. Florida. Alaska is the forget-me-not. Um, Florida is the orange blossom, maybe not surprising. And Kentucky is goldenrod. Those are the other state flowers, if you're interested. Yes. And they also all have a wildflower as well. But we need to get on with the next question. How many botanical varieties of Camellia sinensis are there? Is it one? Four, two, three, I love these ones, three, two, or four, seven. Just a string of numbers. I'm not gonna <laughs> What number would that be? One, four, two, three, three, two, four, seven. Just, anyway, forget it. That's not important, right? It's a password. 142,332,400. No, I got it wrong. Shoot. Okay, what are you guys gonna guess here? So, um, <laughs> he would have guessed Hawaii. I almost put Hawaii because I wanted to keep it tropical. Mm. I threw in Florida to kind of get you guys. Good one. Good worked. One. Totally worked. All right, so, um, so that's exactly what I was thinking. Cindy said, I better say that without the question mark. I had an extra letter by accident last week and it didn't compute. Yes, good one. Oh. Good one. So last chance here, guys. Squeeze your answers in before the time runs out. How many botanical varieties of Camellia sinensis are? I will go out and say this is probably somewhat debatable, but I think the answer that I got was tight here. And I'm mm. going to talk a little bit about one of the varietals once we tabulate. There's another one out there that is not a varietal. It's actually a whole 
genus. I'm, I might get that wrong too. So great work, Cindy and Fernanda, guessing uh, answer number one. There are four wow. different varieties of the Camellia sinensis, the two that we all know and love, Camellia sinensis var sinensis and Camellia sinensis var asomica. There are two other ones, Publilima, Publilima and Dihung genesis. Anyway, I butchered their names, but there's four, those are the four. There's also Camellia taliensis, but that's a g different genus. It's not Camellia sinensis, but that is a kind of puhar that is kind of related to the Asomica one. They're kind of, it's confusing and pretty new, controversial. Did let's, that each, huh? let's get on with the next question. Mm -hmm. Possible. The tea plant is named after this man. One, Ferdinand Camella. Two, Carl Linnaeus. Three, George Carmel. Or four, Robert Plant. <laughs> wow, this is a really good tea trivia. This is a really fun one. This is also related to the botanical aspect, but I won't, I won't slash can't say much more about it. So who is the tea plant named after? Is it Ferdinand Camella, mm -hmm. Carl Linnaeus, George Camel, or Robert Plant? You still have some time to squeeze your answers in. Bayrong is guessing Ferdinand Camella. Uh, Josh guesses two, Carl Linnaeus. Jubaijia guesses three. Igor says, ha ha ha. Maybe because he recognized Robert Plant as the great lead singer of the band Led Zeppelin. It's still possible that the plant's named after him. Betty goes with number two. Simmerjeet, out of respect for the music, Simmerjeet throws down a number four, maybe? Did he? I didn't see. Anyway, the answer is indeed George Camel. The plant was named by Carl Linnaeus, of course, the great, uh, um, I think more than just botanist, but it was named after this Jesuit priest, George Camel. Camellia, even though Carl Linnaeus did not put it in the Camellia genus, he put it in the Thea genus. It was later moved by somebody else into the Camellia genus. Woo! So Whoa. educational. Whoa, yeah, I learned a lot. All right, and this is the final question. What year was Camellia sinensis var asomica? What year was the Camellia sinensis var asomica genome sequenced? Was it 1, 2017, 2, 2012, 3, 1998, or 4, 2019? All right, just check in the comments. Yes, Linnaeus was a famous botanist and scientist and so was uh, George Camel, that is true. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a sip guys, I'm gonna go for it. This is always, uh, yeah, I tricked, I tricked you guys with the Carl Linnaeus, that was uh, kind of on purpose. I'm so naughty. Anyway, I still remember that first time in Sichuan, sipping this tea, terrified I was gonna drop the gaiwan on my lap full of boiling water. And I did burn my lip, the, my tongue, the first time I took a sip, because I <laughs> they literally put the water in the tea. I smartly, immediately took a sip. I learned my lesson. All right, answers rolling in. We've got plenty guesses for 2012, number two. Johnny Loy guesses 98, as well as Beirang. I think Betty also guessed 1998. Um, and the answer is, oh, I stumped everyone. Ooh, Whoa. slam dunk. Uh, the answer is number one, 2017. According to the information I found, this genome, this three billion long genome, about the same size as the human genome, was sequenced in 2017. Anyway, yeah, that was a bit of a tough one and also a little bit irrelevant, but fun. Let's see how everyone did. Yay, Cindy. Whoa. Yay, Cindy, with three correct answers. Fernanda coming in with two, tied with Lolo and a few others, and Jubaijia with two. And everybody's a winner in my book. You guys did awesome. great. You guys did great. Uh, take a guess, have some fun. That's what this is all about. Now back to our regular programming. <laughs> all right, guys, that was an no, awesome. No, you couldn't see me, but probably you heard me You're slurping like crazy. <laughs> that was a great tea trivia. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making so that fun. so fun, guys. It wouldn't be possible without all of you guys throwing out your answers and your little quips and comments. It does make it just awesome, totally awesome. Mm. So Cindy says, we all got to learn something new. Yeah, I, I took a different twist. Yeah, it's a yes. little bit not related to what we're talking about today, but it doesn't matter. It's just for fun. Mm. Right? Absolutely, I learned a lot. Oh, and I remember my little brain what was thinking this when I chose it. Uh -huh. We're getting close to the end. So maybe that's the direction you might want to lean. I don't know. We'll leave it. Well, we're going to talk about that in a future episode, but what? maybe they want to lean in towards sort of the botany, the science, the, those kind of aspects. There's uh -huh. books, papers, and articles, right? It does not have to be a book. It could be a paper that has been published in Chinese that all you have is the title that you found on YouTube, uh, on Google, but you're like, this seems really interesting based on the title and abstract. I wonder what this paper's about. It could be an article, mm. anything. 
And the, the botany of tea does fascinate me because it's so complicated and interesting. Absolutely. Mm. <sighs> you want to take a break? You have been yeah. you're talking nonstop. It's like a little game show. Right. <laughs> I love watching you drinking it. I'm, I'm so wa- nervous. I I'm, feel like I me can too. feel I'm you're watch- nervous. I'm watching myself, right? And right, I'm just like, I can like, feel Whoa. you're nervous. Let me, let me try and do it calm. Yeah, right, relax your shoulders. <laughs> Roll them to the back. Oh, yo, I almost spilled on myself. I'm too relaxed now. I'm like rubber. And now, oh, and look chill. What? Well, I'm practicing, guys. Guys, you give me a rating. Um, <laughs> chill uh, level one to ten. Zero to ten. Okay, give me a rating. I'm going to do it. I'll do it full. Okay. Uh, Did you like the look up and sideways? Anyway, give me a rating one to 10, what, how chill you thought that sip was. <laughs> and we will head over to the book. We've got a large section today, so I shouldn't yes. really goof okay, around. I made right? a mistake in terms of scheduling, but we're gonna finish uh, the whole- No such thing as a mistake. It's just like tea trivia. We did it on purpose. We're gonna have a <laughs> marathon session today. All right, so right, here we go, guys. Get some snacks, guys. Yeah, grab some snacks. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask them. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say this earlier. Um, I picture you guys, you guys are awesome, hanging out with us, doing trivia, going over the book. If you guys are in the mood and it's so, it's, and so inclined, especially I, Josh, you have that little setup going down with your Valentine's Chinese New Year. I would love it if you guys could grab a picture of that, jump on our Discord, join it if you haven't already, throw, throw a picture of your little Sunday tea book setup. Mm. I would love to see your little, that would like, be so fun. I was picturing that as I was making the trivia. I'm like, that, that's so cool that these guys are all just hanging out doing the trivia with us and going over the book. I'd love to see your little, even if it's, it doesn't have to be fancy. Ours isn't fancy at all, um, but I'd love to see it. I'd love to see how you just get settled in and join us. Mm. It's really cool, guys, and I love that you're with us. So now we'll head over to the uh, Sunday Tea Book. So here we go, diving in. No transition, because I started from the wrong screen. All right, so as Jen mentioned, we're going over China tea, a fantastic reference. I would call this a, a great reference about uh, Chinese tea by Jen Li Wu. Uh, we've covered, it covered- I forgot to introduce that. No, it's okay, it's okay. okay. It's, we've, gone, we've gone through the origins of tea and uh, where it comes from, how to understand and appreciate in section one. Step two covered making tea, including to tea, uh, basic tea appraisal at a high level, how to look at tea sets, how to uh, understand water. Then we dove into section two, which is uh, really where the rubber hits the road hardcore, covering all kinds of green teas. Um, green teas, dark teas, uh, we cover oolong tea, black tea, yellow tea. Last week we covered white tea, and today we're wrapping up this section, heading into uh, this section next week, but today we're covering all of the scented tea section. Let's rock and roll. All right. Scented tea. Hmm. Let me just go down a bit. Why? Because we're blocking it for them. Scented tea. All right, guys, here we go. Making flour into tea. This is the prosperity of flour, but also the flourishing of tea. The smell of the tea is elegant, simple and the fragrance of flour is modern and fresh. Mixing tea with fresh flowers, both of which perfectly match each other, that is our daily scented tea. Scented tea is tea's fashion feast. Flowers feel like dancing in the tea. Mm. First sight. Scented tea brings the flavor of tea and fragrance of flowers together. Tea cited fragrance, flower add the flavor. They will fit with each other perfectly. It maintains not only a strong, refreshing tea flavor, but also spiritual fragrance of fresh floral. After brewing and absorbing, the fragrance becomes very strong. The sweetness feels mouthful. It is a sense of exhilaration. It not only contains the effect of tea, but also flowers. It also has good pharmacological effects on human health. I'm going to finish up. I think the page, because this is the last big paragraph here. Whoops, a little bit too far for you guys. Unique way to produce scented tea. Use the odor absorption characteristics of scented tea and mix the fragrant flowers and fresh tea together in a tool. After the tea absorbs the fragrance, then remove the dry flowers. 
The made-up scented tea has a strong fragrance of flowers and the soup is dark and flavored by the northern people who have a strong taste. <laughs> the common scented tea is made of jasmine and according to the different flowers, there are magnolia, asmanthus, pearl orchid, bitter orange scented tea, etc. The ordinary scented tea is made of green tea and some are made of black tea. And finally, carefully watching. The tea soup is light yellow and bright. The bottom is tender and even bright. The charming fragrance. It has a fresh and strong fragrance with clear flower aroma. All right, and that is the page. Let's head back to the top. First, got to grab a sip of tea. So when you sip this tea, it's not uncommon that a little, a beautiful, tender, white jasmine flower will slip into your mouth. And they're actually really delicious. Mm, if they want to see that, they can see how, mm, especially yeah. in a... I'll let me throw that wow. down there. Oh yeah, that's got a nice focus Is there. focus here? Yeah, 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 that's sharp. So you can see the flowers floating on the top mm -hmm. and the leaves on the bottom. Mm. Yeah. This might not be the perfect view to, sh to show the... Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, ayo, Maya, mm -hmm. would this help? Mm. Anyway, I wanted to focus to show you the tenderness of the leaf. Oh. Got to go to the front. Yeah. Look at the beautiful flowers though. You can really see that they're right. almost like, um, what is that fabric that's sort of see-through chiffon or something? Chiffon they're really, look. Yes. And, they, and they have a, they have, but they're fresh. They have a little snap, uh, sort of like a, this is going to sound wrong and weird and really doesn't do it justice, but they have almost a, like a bubble tea texture, but it's flower and delicate and aromatic. It's really wonderful when the flowers... We all eat that. Oh yeah, right? you definitely we recommend to eat that. Even the green tea is uh, mm -hmm. edible, like a uh, tender and juicy and not mm -hmm. a... Like uh, the way we brew that in Gaiwai or even in the... Um, uh, glass is mm -hmm. almost like long steeping kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not, uh, do you feel like, it, especially with the yours, it's smaller size, right? right? To the vessel. So it's It's more getting more and more powerful, which is why powerful. I'm kind of left the lid off, hoping for right. a little shot of water. But right. yes, the flavor becomes intense, but it's not bitter, it's not astringent, it's still. And very clean. It's and very clean covered. after a swallow, right. Mm. The bit, you do get a hit of bitterness at the beginning, but it mm. cleans up quickly. And it's just uh, the, mm. the ratio is really oh, hot. Oh, I have almost rolled away. <laughs> I got to get locks on this chair. Right. All right, guys. So before we dive into all this session, I just want to mm. mention that again, this is about Chinese tea. So sanded tea, we're talking about Chinese sanded tea. Great point. It's a, a you know, it's not like a, a Davis tea and stuff like that. They Earl Grey out of Scotland. Earl Grey, no. Right. Uh, yeah, this is talking about Chinese sanded tea. Mm -hmm. That's a great point and one thing I, uh, like uh, of course I tend to ball them all together, but I didn't, it's great that you said that out loud because mm -hmm. I, I knew that kind of subconsciously, but yes, Chinese scented tea. Great, let's head back to the book. There we go. <laughs> all right, so mm -hmm. May flower in his prosperity. So the, the, in general, this whole section was pretty chunky. Um, but it sounds like what they're trying to say here is that, the, like our opening paragraphs tend to do, right? Uh, it's an overview that basically putting flowers with the tea seems to, uh, you know, the elegant smell of the tea goes with the simple fragrance of the flower, making it modern and fresh. Um, they match each other. They sort of seems to say that they're enhancing each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, good time to remind you guys, if you do want to follow along, the link to the finished translation is down below so you can see what the uh, sort of updated translation looks like. Yeah, so no, I don't think any big scent. Oh, this was where I chuckled. Right. Scented tea is tea's fashion feast. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> cute. I'm not sure. Yeah, the thing is, it's really a different habit of uh, saying things. It doesn't mm. feel awkward reading the Chinese, but right. reading the English, just people don't say it like that right. in English. Yeah. But uh, in general... It's a general, little bit too direct, huh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I don't know a better way to translate without uh, removing that fashion feast or those kind of things. Right, so, you got to find a whole different metaphor. Yeah, just you have to take a totally different approach mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was what you said is totally get the essence of a beginning of a chapter, which means that they are a really good match to right. enhance each other. Okay, let's give it a check mark. 
just because I wanted to use the highlighter. All right, so first sight, flavor of team fragrance, sea sight of fragrance, flowers add the flavor. They, again, it's sort of a restatement of the brief paragraph above. They fit with each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. I think the first sentence is fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, the spiritual fragrance of floral. This is probably uh, again another. It's not uh, spiritual. Anything. Yeah, it's more yeah. to say that they're they each have their the tea ha brings the flavor. The flower brings right, the, the aroma. aroma. Kind of uh, boosts each other. Same with mm. the taste. Like uh, mostly mm. taste of the tea, but with a little boost from the flowers taste. While the aroma mostly smells like flower, right, but right, with right. a little tea boost and the sweetness feels mouthful is a little bit i'm not sure if they were trying no, to those are about... chinese with a char like a four right. character word ah. uh, that is hard to like uh, it's kind of silly to translate word by word but gotcha. what it means is the aroma and the sweetness will fill your whole mouth like right right and, and a sense of exhilaration check mark right no. the ending was talking about the health benefits it's combined both Mm. Uh, from flowers because we believe different flowers have its own oh, purpose that's and uh, lost. like the Chinese the tradition tea, TCM, traditional right? Chinese medicine right, TCM right. with uh, tea also have really, really good health benefits then you basically you have everything yeah. you want yeah the translation just says it, it well it's yeah it's to that's totally lost it just says it's healthy but I think it seems like it's more detailed to say you get the benefits of the flower you get the benefits of the tea Mm -hmm. which have their unique benefits each each mm -hmm. unto themselves yeah oh yo, i didn't mean to scroll but i somehow scrolled i still want to give this section a check mark i'm feeling very check mark friendly today <laughs> all right check mark friend. so i got a little refill i'm gonna go in for a sip it should be hot because it's just refilled however it had a little bit of other water there so not as hot as first time let's try it out Mm. Oh wow. I just love the flavor of the jasmine flower. It's so bold and the green tea. Like it said in the last two paragraphs, right? It's really there's no there's no um clash. It really is a uh, tied mm. together. All right, unique way to produce sanity. tea. Sorry, I just I love watching you drink from the guy one because the whole way it feels a jiggly jiggle jiggle. Oh yeah. So nervous. And it, when it's full, I'm pretty much terrified, right? You guys can rate every one of my sips from uh, 1 to 10, okay? And we'll go back. <laughs> we'll see what my aggregate score we, is. We have to practice more mm. so that you can lounge on the sofa and just drink like that. Oh, like in Sichuan. They're yeah. so chill. There's just a kind of a very chill vibe to mm. those people. All right. So this paragraph, unique way to produce scented tea. Um, so we've talked about it in previous episodes, especially in the tea storage episode, that you need to keep your tea safe from odors. So this is actually saying the similar, uh, the corollary to this is if you mm -hmm. want to scent a tea, we're, we can use that characteristic mm -hmm. um, and mix up flowers and tea together in mm -hmm. a tool. So that's kind of cute and funny. I think I chuckled there too. I don't know what that means, but I guess you just have a tool it's just a to set mixing together. It oh, has okay. its own setup. Tool. So I'm going to give that one an yeah, X. Okay. Tool. tool gets an X. <laughs> After the tea absorbs the fragrance, um, right? So, the, and like, unlike this tea, which has the flowers mm -hmm. present, a lot of tea, and Cindy, let us, Cindy is having jasmine tea, or if mm -hmm. any of you are having a scented tea, let us know if it's with flowers or without. Um, this says it in general, they're removed once the, uh, 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 once the aroma is absorbed. And we're gonna talk more about that later. It's a very interesting topic. Yeah, we'll yeah. Talk more. Yeah, this is. We're just gonna get deeper and deeper here. It's very. This is. Mu I hate to say it, but it's a much more interesting chapter than I anticipated. And I think. I'm we, glad to. We both thought it was a pretty short chapter. It's not. It's a little bit longer and interesting. Mm. So um, yeah, so that's how the tea gets. So down, I'm down into sort of the second sentence. Yeah, that looks good. The dark, the soup is dark, is interesting and flavored by the northern people. I think they mean is the style. Favored, that... I think it was not. Oh, it does favored. say favored. Oh, favored. Okay, my yeah. bad, my bad. Um, <laughs> but the soup is dark. I think by gonna... dark is comparing uh, with the green tea liquor, mm, so it's mm. deeper, like a, a yellow. Like a, you will see that in yeah. a lot of Chinese restaurant is that a deeper, like a yellow, almost like oolong color. Yeah, that's right. Even gold. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, and then the favored by northern people. Northern who, uh, people, old times, especially before 2000, it's really like the northern tea market are dominant, were dominated mm. by uh, basically jasmine green tea. Mm. And really, um, you can say low end, but uh, uh, they are really like a powerful, pungent, strong tea. Right, One right. of the reasons is their water is not as good. So they use that to cover up, oh, make the right, water right, more drinkable, right. and their consumption is huge. They buy teas uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of other weeks uh, by kilos and stuff. They buy huge. Oh, amount. they just stock up for the year, kind of. No, thing? no, 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 no. They drink that. Oh, they drink that like <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's really fast mm. and uh, stuff. Right, no hundred gram bags for them, right? No, no. <laughs> right, they buy by the kilo. Like a one, two, the two. Okay. I wanted to mention Full because family, that reminds me of the article in Cha Ren about um, sort of the rise of the when Te Guan Yin kind of got popular was very influenced by that taste, that flavor, that domination in the north and how to break out. Mm. So check that out. I'll put a link down below to the uh, Cha Ren magazine. Um, it's the article about Te Guan Yin. Um, Title escapes me right now, but it'll be obvious. The word Tag Wan Yin is in the title. Mm. <laughs> All right. Um, common scented tea. Um, oh, and then they cover different styles that are made. So Jasmine, probably the most common. And then also you've got Magnolia, Osmanthus, Pearl Orchid, Bitter Orange. Interesting. So I wasn't sure if the translation is right. Pearl Orchid, I don't think that's identical to this. So this is called Zhu Lan Hua. Ooh, ooh. In Chinese. Oh, you have pictures. I, right? We need your help right now. Mm, if okay? you recognize Because if you're following along in the translation, we named a few of the flowers, right? I think this is the section where we named a couple flowers. Mm -hmm. No, not we. Not we. She named the flowers. She did the translation wonderfully. But these flowers, she asked me, what is this flower in English? And I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, have a look at these flowers and see if you can help us figure out. This is the Zhu Huai. Uh, is it called Zhuhua? Zhu Lanhua. Zhu Lanhua. Mm. So that's the Zhu Lanhua there, guys. I saw somebody call that a wild, old Chinese wild rice flower or something, but I don't think they're the same. Right, okay. Mm. Did, and I'll just, so I don't know how to let say Let me show it. you. Did I get the right one? I think yeah. there is a, some were pretty different, so I tried to pick the one mm. that I thought was right. Yes, I think so that's, that's the right So that's the one. Zhu Lanhua. I want to also show you, just bear with me while I uh, yeah. flip the view around. I'm going to get rid of the Zhu Lan Hua and bring up the Dai Dai Hua. Yes. So this is, um, did I get rid of everybody? No. There we go. So this one in the book, it translated as the bitter orange. It seems to be in that kind of a family, but I'm not sure if it's right. We call that Dai Dai Hua. So if you know that, uh, let us know. I'm not very sure because in terms of those plants, sometimes they look really similar. Yeah, and if you want to see any of them again, mm. so never, Fernanda didn't see it. So that, yeah, we maybe come back to those, but we'll jump back to the book for now. But anyway, mm. that's the, uh, the one of them and then you saw the other. So if you know what those are, let us know so we can put the uh, English translation there. Mm. And back to, there we go. Took me a while to find it. I found it. Lime. Hmm. Lime. I wonder. It's, a, it's in that family, I think, but I right. don't think it's quite just lime. Lime flower. Um, Maybe it's a colloquial name of a... Uh, because mm. sometimes we call that like something like that, but it doesn't grow a lime. It's the lime flower. It's just... Right, I'm right. I'm not sure. All right. So um, thank you for that, Fernanda. We'll check into that. Mm. And you can also, be, uh, the Chinese uh, character is in the link yes. uh, down below. If those pictures are not very obvious, you can copy paste the Chinese characters. And, That's what I did. And Google that in uh, Google image. It might give you more local. Yeah, you'll have it. a lot more to look at. Yeah. I just grabbed a few samples just for today, but mm -hmm. that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the um, unique way to produce tea. I don't think we missed anything there. These are the sort of laying the groundwork for what's to come. Mm. Um, careful watching. The tea soup is light yellow and bright. The bottom is tender and even bright. And uh, I have to say, like, let's just shoot back to the, uh, back to the, like, you can see the liquor oh. is really lovely. Mm -hmm. um, really. Uh, My you see what we mean? That really yellow. I think when one? we say radiant, you can see, uh, you can kind of see what we mean. That's a beautiful liquor. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> and it has a fresh and strong fragrance with clear flower aroma. That one gets, those both get a giant check mark, okay? Giant yeah. check mark. Giant check mark, okay? Mm. Skills for brewing. Let us dive into the next section, okay? I'm gonna just mm. slide myself over to the other side here. Do you wanna check the comments? Before yeah, let's do some comment check. Thank you. Mm. Let's head over to the comments and see what's going on. Lots of comments. Thanks, guys. So, um, <laughs> I'm just, I don't know where we were. Mm. It's so f funny when you warn us that it's going to be a long session. I couldn't be more excited. Yay, Josh, I'm glad you're <laughs> excited. If this is a game show, Phil, trust Trustworthy is a good name for you. You get a 10. Oh, I got a 10. I think that was for my sip. Thanks. Nice. Thank you, uh, Beirong. Um, Josh said, yeah, Josh said, and then uh, beautiful. We were showing the liquor. We're just going way back to catch up on the comments, guys. We were a little, I was absorbed with the uh, book for a moment there. Two pictures sent to the Discord. One, oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Josh. I'm looking forward to seeing those. Uh, general chat. Yeah, you can put it in general chat. You put it wherever you want. I'm pretty uh, flex. Flexible on that. Cindy gave me a nine. I must have made a little error with my sip. She didn't give me a 10 out of 10. <laughs> Jubai Gia says, uh, Sichuan people know how to relax. I, man, I couldn't, couldn't agree more. I want to go back and get the ear, the ear, the street ear cleaning. If you're, if you're thinking to yourself, what the heck did he just say? That's what I just said. Okay. Street ear cleaning. Holy olfactory explosion. I'm late again. Oh, smell. <laughs> Welcome back, Time Signature MMA. We're good. We're glad to see you. Glad you made it. And Cindy sent a Discord of uh, her Lunar New Year setup. That's awesome. Oh, Thanks, cool. guys. I'm so Thank looking you. forward to see those. I yeah. also have a scented tea today. The first time in a very long time. Mm. It's jasmine green tea, blooms removed and hand tied into butterfly knots. Wow. Ooh. Reminds me of the seaweed we get. <laughs> but probably tastes way better. Not a big fan of the kelp, kelp knots. It's not seaweed, it's kelp. Anyway, Fernanda's rolling on the floor at MMA is bursting through the door comment. <laughs> Betty is, uh, oh, are you, you're brewing a jasmine silver needle. That must be mm. interesting, very interesting. Nice. Oh, time signature, I'm having a herbal tea with floral components, but that's pr that probably doesn't count. Everything counts. We always want to know what you're drinking and how it how it tastes. Like a shootout for everybody and everybody on the stream. If you have a cool tasting note that arises up, just shoot it down in the comments. We love to read how your session is going too. Beirong, can someone give me the invitation link for Discord server? I missed it. Oh, I think Beirong, if you check in the description down below, I think I put them in um, all of them. So you should find it down there. It'll have those. Or right now on the screen. Yeah, or that's below. It's, it's always there. It's a lot to type. They have to retype that <gasps> true, if they use true. this, but the link contains that right there. That, that. <laughs> right? It's, it's a so lot confusing. Of, oh. Oh, my brain's in knots. Um, Fernanda, never saw in here lime. That's a lime flower, right? A small green fruit, mm. maybe a key lime, yuzu lime. Okay, Cindy I was a teacher. Cindy says my tea has... Ha oh, what, what, what? No, sorry, say that. Cindy says uh, my tea has had the blossoms removed, but mm. it is still has very strong jasmine taste. Ah. Too strong in my opinion. It's from a different vendor. I think yours might be more del delicate. Mm. 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 Never saw that. We're going to talk about that later, so yes. it's I'm glad you mentioned that, Cindy. Mm. And then there's the lime flower, mm -hmm. green fruit, key lime, Huge. and Cindy explains the grading. She was a teacher. She has high expectations, so I'm not even <laughs> so grabbing a saucer really anymore, so I'm really down in the five zone. I would give him a seven. No, as a four, you, because you guys see this way. I see this way. You know, when you're relaxed, you put your cup here. When you're nervous, you, you know, because uh, he was nervous, he doesn't want to spill. So with the help of neck, <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> Beijing Tan, right? What's up? <laughs> That's 10 out of 10. All right, here we go. So uh, let's wrap up and we'll head back into the book. I wonder what, I wonder what yuzu is. I have some yuzu. Oh, yuzu, yuzu, yuzu permalo. Oh, mm. that's a pomelo. And didn't really know. Oh, mm. 
So it's it's not a pomelo flower, right? We've had pomelo it's scented. It's not um, a pomelo flower. Mm. 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 And Eden O'Brien just joined. Just received my first Gong Fu set. Had my first session with a friend last night. Tasted a white tea called Shomei and an Ansi Oolong called Dadang. Dadan. Big egg, maybe? I don't know. <sighs> Today I'm sipping a green tango onion mini cake. Yay! Welcome to the stream, cool. Eden. We're, we're glad you joined us and congrats on your first Gong Fu set and diving right in head first. We're covering scented tea today. Simmerji just finishing up steep number six on Ying Hong number nine. Getting a bit lighter but still amazing. Wow, way to go. I love that tea. Cool. I, really, I might have some after. I'm really enjoying this uh, jasmine green but Simmerji right? keeps mentioning the Ying Hong. Keeps getting me all... <laughs> All excited, I really like that. I haven't had that in a long time. All right, guys, we're heading back to the next section. No, no transition, just sound effect. All right, <laughs> we're all set. Skills for brewing mm -hmm. scented tea. Oh, I gotta switch to the book though, so I can scroll. Temperature of water, determined by the tea. For green tea, the temperature should be about 80 degrees C. For oolong tea, that should be boiling water. Mm -hmm. Cast amount, the ratio of tea and water in one to 50, suitable tea sets, covered bowl, porcelain cup, or pot. Covered bowl is the guy one. Yeah, so let's, I think we'll just go over this since it's, I think this is covers a whole page, so let's just knock this out quick. So this is just some, um, I think this is perfect. I'm gonna give it a check mark. Yeah. I don't think we need to say much. It gives you some water temperature parameters, it yep. gives you some ratio, uh, all of which we've covered, and, you're, and you already said the main thing, which was covered bowl is a guy one. Um, porcelain cup, it's actually any glass would work like what we have here, mm -hmm. and or a pot. Oh, yo, sorry. There we go. The basic classification of scented tea. All right, here we go. Green tea class. Hmm? Oh, green tea class. The basic classifications of scented tea. Green tea class. Jasmine, mm -hmm. Osmanthus pomelo, Osmanthus dragonwell, Jasmine, and El Scholzia ciliata scented tea. Woo! That is definitely a botanical name. Black tea class. Rose black tea. Oh, so <laughs> neglected. <laughs> Age tea class. Osmanthus iron mercy goddess, Jasmine oolong, Osmanthus oolong, orchid tree, etc. The identification of scented tea. Weight. Weigh a little tea in hands. Carefully check if there is petal, stem, or powder, etc. The high quality scented tea is heavier, but without stems or powders. The inferior one is lighter and with a small quality of impurities. Appearance. The appearance of scented tea is tight, slim, and straight, green, and even, and bright. Such kind is better. On the contrary, belongs to the aged tea. Smelling. Smell and check if there is odor. Then put it under nose and breathe deeply to see whether it is pure or not. Better one has strong fragrance. Cindy, I'm looking at you. <laughs> the identification of scented tea. The real scented tea is made by scenting the tea and flowers. The advanced scented tea needs to be scented many times so it has strong fragrance. The filtered flowers are without aroma, which is called dry flower. There is no dry flower in advanced scented tea. The fake scented tea refers to the mixed dry flowers into tea. It is, common, it is commonly to see in the market that a lot of scented tea with dry flowers, but still called real scented tea. Actually, it is a mixture by dry flowers with the inferior scented tea to imitate as the real one. It has no real fragrance rather than after being brewed. All right, this is where we're getting into some pretty cool stuff uh, warming up here. Starting with the identification. So mm -hmm. it seems like you, the first step is you put some in your hand and you get a feel. Is this a nice weighty tea? What about a classification? Did I, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't go back far enough. Okay, so we've got, uh, I think there is something here that's, that's a little curious. Green mm. tea. Uh, and black tea, I think, are pretty straight, and there's their types. Yeah, so but basically... But aged tea class is like, is that... Oolong tea. Ah, I don't know. It's not aged tea, it's yeah, just it's oolong. oolong tea. Mm, mm. Uh, the interesting thing here, you probably noticed that the different types of sand, sanded tea were based on uh, different base 
is it, is that green tea based or is that black tea based right. or is that a oolong tea based? Right. And uh, basically, flour yeah. plus the tea. I think it's also worth noting that uh, again, we're translating a book from um, help me out, early nineties, late late. 2008-ish. Oh, late uh, 2008-ish. So now where you're, you can even see other, other oh, stuff, right? Oh, there's a pu'er right? as well. Yeah. Uh, pu'er those. Uh, there's a lot of like uh, mm. different things. The thing is that uh, this book has a kind of focus on the mass market, the right. what's most popular right. and stuff like that. You so those it, are like, more boutique sort of uh, one-off. Uh, uh, it's, oh, you can always see that, but it's not a in right. terms of quantity production and stuff mm. it doesn't compare mm. those are classic classic combinations of tea and flowers and uh, has you know has a long history they got and, a check mark uh, say, yes and uh, same with uh, like uh, production volume is kind of a also another thing yes there's a poor like uh, you have rice sticky rice poor which is not made with sticky rice a lot of tea name is very confusing if you really take that literature right, it's a right. kind of a, a plant that has that uh, aroma oh mm. so it was more metaphoric or it has that similar aroma mm -hmm. with sticky rice so it got this name so All sometimes right. it's the actual things with the tea form the name sometimes it's the flavor or the aroma of the tea plus the tea form right, the name right awesome i'm really I really love this section here. So the identification of scented tea. So it seems like the idea is you feel that in your hand and you want it to be, uh, you know, relative to how heavy tea is, right? It's not mm -hmm. like gonna, you're not gonna have to do weightlifting to be able to hold it, but you want to feel something that feels good in your hand and isn't full mm -hmm. of uh, stems, broken powder, I assume means like broken and crusty. Yeah, um, it shakes. Yeah, sh shake or yeah, powders. Mm. Uh, or petals or you flowers. Want, you and don't want a flowers. In petal it. stem powder, yeah. Mm -hmm. So interesting. I found that interesting, right? Yes. Let's hold that and we're going to talk more because later on we're diving into jasmine green tea. So I will explain a little bit more. But for now, uh, I mean, level one, let's stay with this mm -hmm. more uh, general kind of description. Right. Okay. And just want to point out in terms of a weight, right? You really need a lot of practice to know if right. it's a weighty or not yes because uh, sometimes you think it's oh it's a weighty it's a good tea it could be just it's not properly dried mm, it's good wet so yep. it's heavier right yeah yeah that's a great point of course not soaking wet but like no we talked about that in the storage episode right, right. where this is actually a subtle imperfection in the processed tea that you'll unfortunately likely find out after you sort, store that in a sealed container you do everything perfect, suddenly your tea is moldy or something. Yeah, nice. like in terms of like, uh, is that a 4% water content vis-a-vis 10% water content is not very easy to detect yeah. for people who are not... Not like a consumer a, skill. Yeah, that's it's a, not a, a consumer a, skill. It's yeah. seriously a pro skill. All right, so let's... Great clarification, right? Because it's, it's not that easy to just pick up a bit of mm. tea and say, oh, that's the right weight or that's not the right weight you're talking on sub gram difference here mm. appearance the appearance okay so this is this isn't too bad right mm -hmm. um it's similar to a lot of other tea that we've talked about the good mm -hmm. ones are tight slim straight green even mm -hmm. bright you look at the luster of the of the tea leaf itself mm -hmm. because it, just because it's scented doesn't mean the tea can be slack the tea can be like whatever mm -hmm. no it still has to stand up as a good tea mm -hmm. um, and then if it's not none of those things then it belongs to aged tea. Again, they don't mean they don't mean like aged oolong or aged puar. I think they mean old tea or like not stale. good tea. Stale. Old tea, like stale. from uh, like uh, mm. old. Right, like last year's or yeah. just yeah. Right. And it's not yellow tea. <laughs> right. Because the leaves would look like a yellowish dog. Mm. Okay. Right. And the smell. Yeah. Check. There's odor. Pure. I want to talk about the the. I was going pure. to ask how to do that because uh, it's easy to smell, and you might just smell some great aroma. How do you know that you smell a lot of jasmine green tea? Then you, what is pure is not simple. It's not just one. It's uh, mm. 
imagine a train station with or vis-a-vis -vis a how do you say that like a bunch of people sing together in a concert and that kind of a choir a choir yes mm. that's what i wanted to say they still uh, all have say a hundred people but do they well blend oh, to get that's pure. very interesting that's, that's pure. so like grand central station that cacophony yes. of a bunch of people together just mm. talking in their own ah we and call so, that so the mix. choir is pure yeah. Yes. Like give it a pure sound, yes. a beautiful sound, give you goosebumps. Yeah, give you mm. layers and stuff, but mm. it's not mm. independent from mm. the crowd. They are right. well mixed. So right. that's pure. It's I not see. simple. It's not thin. Oh, great it's metaphor. Not... I love that. Yeah, Thank imagine you. you take like the uh, a choir of men and women too. So to, to mm. take it further, you've got the flowers and the tea. They, you can see that they're different, but together they're really beautiful. Even, yes. even better than alone. Yes. Wonderful metaphor. Love it. Mm. Okay, right on. Lots of comments rolling. I can't wait to get there, but we're going to finish up this page. Do you want to finish the comments and then come back? Yeah, so okay. So that it's not too far. Yeah, it was pretty hard last time. That's yeah, a great yeah. point. She's so smart. <laughs> Over to the comments, guys. Okay. Mm. Mm. Ah, so here much? we go. Okay, okay. Where? Yuzu is Pamelo? Mm. Oh, Yozu. Yeah, yoza, but yoza. in uh, Japanese uh, pronunciation, they do that. The good right, thing with right. Japanese is you guys all know how to pronounce, but in Chinese, we always translate that. I don't know why. Right, right. You know, you don't hear people say yoza, but everybody knows pamelo. Yuzu. Or right, yuzu. Pamelo. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, mm. e Eden O'Brien, Taiwanian mini cake sounds interesting. Mm, they're oh. wrong talking to Eden, who had just yes. joined. Oh, completely different. Oh, so we're speculating that yuzu is that, but it's interesting if that's not the case, let us know because we're not, it sounds like the Japanese version of pamelo, yuzu, yuzu, yeah. pamelo, but uh, maybe it's something different. I had some go, uh, goisa cha this morning, which I really like. It's Japanese dark tea. Ooh. Very interesting. Admittedly, it's got nothing to do with Chinese scented tea, but it's the best uh -huh. I can do. No, we're always interested whether you're oh, drinking so a scented tea. Yeah. Love to hear about these, yes. especially those with little oddball ones. That's a great, yeah. let us know how, it, uh, how the flavors compare. Is it like a Shu Puar? Is it more like a Tian Jian? Like, or a, like where, where does it fit in your spectrum? Like whatever you're familiar with. I shouldn't give you ideas. Maybe you have no idea what I'm talking about. That's fine. Why, how does he like it basically? Okay, uh, it must be a fruit I've never seen. Pomelo is closer mm. to grapefruit. The yuzu is close to Italian lime. Oh, okay. what's Italian lime? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to do a whole bunch more botany when I'm done this episode. <laughs> Dig into this. Maybe my, tea, uh, maybe my tea is too strong on the jasmine because I'm brewing it too hot. Mm, mm. Possible, possible. Could you can play to, with that. Yeah. Uh, reduce the mm. uh, leaf amount or lower the water temperature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. You do lemonade. Oh, no. neat. I'm lost. Where are you at? Here. Yeah. Never had. Oh. That sounds good. Time signature mm. MMA never had you never had yuzu lemonade Cindy, thanks Fernanda. Wow, this section of the book reads almost like a poem. Oh yo, I don't know what happened. Sorry. Oh, it's here. Here, yeah. I'm I'm still lost. Can you point? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Fernanda, my pleasure. Oh, I love this section. Bai Mudan with pink rose petals. Yum. Oh, huh? oh, oh. The is that the picture here? That's just... No, no. I think they're having their own dialogue or something. Orchid tree, you mean the Mulan Magnolia. Orchid tree? Magnolia Lilliflora. Oh, 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 no. Sorry. Magnolia is... I don't think it mentioned... Oh, it mentioned Magnolia earlier, but this orchid tree is a... Uh, is a I don't know why it translated. Shulan is a kind of flower. Shulan uh, Hua is a kind of flower. Sezhong mm. is a, a, a mixture of uh, Anxi Wulong. Ah. Yeah, okay, it's okay. here. Like uh, here it says Osmosis Wulong, orchid tree, etc. It's right. not a orchid tree, it's a Shulan. It's ah. its own kind. Literally translated as orchid tree, but I don't think that sounds right. Right, right. In age T class section, yeah, he clarified where mm. it was there. I was look at, oh, look at the Jew. Last time I drank magnolia tea was with pomegranate seeds and gum powder green. 
Ooh. Time Signature MMA. What about by Mudam with lavender flowers? That idea? I don't know. I don't know. Do you like it? That's right. what I feel like the That's a pretty really... Western. Um, like we don't. Do you see that flower in Chinese scented tea? I don't know about that. Like it's pretty Western. Um, lavender aromatic flower. Lavender is not very Chinese flower. It's yeah, not that's what indigenous. I thought. Mm. Might be a little soapy. I don't know. It'd be fun to soapy. try. Soapy. <laughs> don't you feel like just because I have the on my brain that lavender is right, more right. of that kind of a a bath time aroma, not necessarily a tea time aroma. But I don't know. And I've never ever heard of yuzu lemonade. I need to get out more. <laughs> we all do. Holy cow! I'll yeah. be happy when we can finally do that. Get out a little bit more. Uh, Eden O'Brien is yes, so excited. I'll update you soon. Still getting set up. Mm, mm. Awesome, cool. And Fernanda says mm, MMA depends how much lavender you put. Mm, yeah. Nice. Nice Eden. Holy lemony freshness. You got to try it, Cindy. Oh, he's had that. Oh, you, nice. He's had yuzu lemonade, so it must be some kind of lime. Put on Discord. Yuzu is excellent to to muse sweet. Moose, moose sweet moose. is excellent to moose. Oh, m make a lime moose. Probably make a. Is that what you mean to make like a, a desserty moose out of it? Because she spelled M O U S S E like the, Then, yeah, probably some kind of mm. moose. We love dessert. We mm. really love dessert. We had really good cheesecake yesterday with our tea time. Don't know what we're gonna do today. We're out of snacks. <laughs> All right, guys, heading back in. Great, uh, great comments though, and great dialogue about the different teas mm. that you guys are having. Um, looking forward to hearing how the dark, the dark Japanese tea. Yeah, tastes. yeah, that's a very and interesting. If, really caught my eye. Yeah, yeah. and if someone's having Bai Mudan with what was the Bai Mudan with something pink, pink rose petals, huh? I'd oh, love to hear rose. about that too. And ah. yeah, cool. So we'll come back to that. We'll come back to the comments again later. I need the book and we'll dive back in. Here we go, guys. Nice. I love the pictures. I'm just kind of taking my time, but not too much. Look at these Did jasmine flowers. Did you talk about this part? I don't think so. Oh, oh sorry. The identification of sanded tea? Oh, right. We jumped out before we finished the page. Guys, I had to back up. Right there. Mm. Right. I kind of do pages on purpose because I get oh, No, it's okay. It's okay. You got me. You, you keep me honest. You keep me honest. We're all gold. Okay. All right. The identification of scented tea. I'm sure they would have yelled out too. Hey. I think we read it already. Did we? Yes. We just didn't talk about it. Yes. We definitely read it. I remember reading over this bump in the page, which is the uh, tray. Bump. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So <laughs> your memory I know, it's works. about the bump. It's not those it was, it was hard to read, minute. that's why. Okay, okay. So there is a very interesting concept here about real sanity vis-a-vis -vis the fake ones. And in fake ones, it talk about that you see flowers in the tea and they market that as uh, the real sanity. Right, yet we have flowers in our yes. tea. Yes, and it's even our supreme tea. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, what are these people telling me? It's a mixed message, right? Mm. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> That's good because I think now I think about this, I think it would be easier if we go through the next session, then jump back. Oh, cover the jasmine tea? Yes, because that would talk about the process. Then we will have a better sense. Ah, yes, and what's that, real that's what and counterfeit you're right. Fake. I love the, the part about the process really shocked me. I was so enthralled with this section, so I'm glad you let me zoom forward. Jasmine tea. The scented tea is flavored with flowers. Tea elicit the fragrance of flowers and flowers add the aroma of tea. Because they support each other, it contains both the refreshness of tea and the fragrance of flower. Smell spring within scented tea. Let me back down a bit so you guys can see the words. Jasmine tea is the precious species of scented tea. It has a history for more than 700 years. Some people describe the jasmine tea that you can smell spring within scented tea in China. It is also one of the best natural health products among China and all over the world. The scenting process is mainly to release the fragrance of flowers and tea. The process of fragrance releasing is a chemical change. 
By the functions of enzyme, temperature, water, and oxygen, the ripe jasmine gives out the fragrant materials. And along with the increase of fragrance absorption, the tea gets more water absorption. And under such conditions, it arouses the chemical change. The soup becomes bright yellow step by step, and it tastes mellow, which from the special fragrance color, and which form the special fragrance color and taste of scented tea. Gold. <laughs> Appreciation always before drinking. Feature of appearance, tight, slim, and well proportioned. The color is black, brown, and oily. Enjoying while tasting. The soup is bright yellow green. It tastes mellow and refresh. It has durable and fresh fragrance. All right, I just rushed through that because I want to get back to the meat. Mm. All right. In the beginning here, up in paragraph one, um, tea and the center, because they support each other, it's a little bit, it, you feel like the flower is getting something from the tea, which I don't think is what they meant. Tea elicit the fresh fragrance of flower and flowers add the aroma of tea. It's kind of, I think, but I don't think the flowers are getting much from the tea, right? The flowers are giving to the tea and the tea is getting from the flowers, I think. Let's jump down because they continue here. I just here. feel like it's a, a rhetorical way to say uh -huh. that they work together and okay. it, it, it's really tricky to translate. Okay. But they, it just they work is together. they work together. Yeah, and if you check the finished translation, mm. it'll be, uh, it's, it's crystal clear. Mm. Um, but I did have trouble figuring out what they meant here. One thing though, because the title you see is Jasmine Tea. So mm -hmm. at least in China, if you talk about Jasmine Tea, there's no question. It's not going to be Jasmine Black Tea. It's not going to be uh, Jasmine Very Other Tea. Point. Jasmine Tea in Chinese, it's not going to be pure Jasmine Flower Tea. If you talk right. about jasmine tea. It won't tea, be an herbal infusion yes, of jasmine. It's jasmine oil. green tea. Right, right. So you can drop the green in a Chinese context. Everybody yes. in China knows you yes. mean. Even actually, I remember from one of our previous sections much earlier in the series, I think even the, it's so prolific, you could that even say hua cha. Yeah, standard Just flower tea, tea even means that. Yeah, yeah. So it's really prolific. This is sort of the king of scented tea in the Chinese domain. Jasmine tea... I didn't realize it was more than 700 years. That's pretty... It's a very uh, long history. Very long history. One of the best natural health products among China. The first paragraph I think is perfect. Mm -hmm. But now here, back to the gold. I even kind of couldn't hold myself. I had to make a little comment during the reading, which I try right. not to do. I try not to editorialize while I'm reading the... Okay. So the sending process released the fragrance of the flower and the tea. The process of fragrance releasing is a chemical change. So what you're saying in the first sentence is basically uh, there's a, uh, again, the, the, pause, the, the, pause. Oh. I just want to tell you guys that if you're not following along in the finished translation, just for this section, it's worth it. I, yes. when I read the, it's, I can tell you, I can't say what's wrong because it doesn't feel wrong, but there's a lot missing from this English version. She, now you're going to explain it. But yeah, I was going to say go to the link yes. because there's a special it's really, tea term. Yes. It's very, the, in this paragraph, the first one called the scenting process, right? It's a special tea term called uh, mm. So, and then the, pro, the whole paragraph kind of explains part of it. Mm. The key step in xunzhi, in the scenting process. Right. It's talking about two things. One from the flower aspect, flower giving out all this aroma to the tea. From the tea aspect, tea absorbs all the aroma. Right. From the flower. It, which is fascinating. So I think that's what this sentence is, but because of the structure, it's, pardon me, it's, it's easy to miss what's happening. So you've got the, Enzymatic, temperature, water, and oxygen working so that the jasmine can give out, basically give up all and, of its fragrance. Yes, and that's the structure for this paragraph. Mm. The first one where you're talking about is what happened to the, uh, the uh, flower mm. that uh, giving off all its aroma process right. is uh, chemical, is also biological, biological? Physical. Physical? No, not physical. Biological, like okay. a, there's a, like a, it's not just a physical. 
Mm. Biological is sure. not a chemical? word. Chemical? No, biological. Chemical. Yes. Yeah. So it's the plant it's sort the, of. Yes, it's the plant's reaction because they're not fully dead, dead, mm. right? So that's their last thing. Give up all the aroma, the substance, uh, fragrance, and everything. And that, uh, no, no, this is so interesting. I love this part. Right. So when that happening, at the same time, the lower part of the paragraph is talking about what happens to the tea. So two levels of tea reaction. One is physical, which is because the tea plant itself absorbs the aroma as the more physical thing, mm -hmm. and the water also attached to the tea leaves, and it become a little bit of a chemical changes because you can also call that like slide oxidation. Almost right, because right. there's oxygen, there's temperature, there's a humidity, like moisture in the tea. So it's not only just absorbing, but they're like a physical absorbing. There's also a little bit chemical because um, of the absorbing. Because yeah. of the absorbing, and that's why the tea. Uh, it talk about the tea liquor gradually change from the uh, lighter green yellowish yeah color sort of that to bright deeper. yellow mm -hmm. and that's not a compare say this tea vis-a-vis -vis that tea is compared to that specific tea itself right before it goes through this process if it's a light green it become maybe light yellow or uh, medium tone greenish yes. yellow yes. like itself has a deepen because of this process right. and uh, also the taste also changes a little bit because it has a minor almost like a uh, oxidation uh, right. Effect, right? So it's a richer. That's why uh, it gets I that think mellow, right? It mellows out. And it mellows out. It also takes out to the edge of a little bit of that astringency mm -hmm. because in China, sanded teas are in general low end teas. Mm -hmm. The good ones. It's a, it's almost the same with wine, right? If we have thirty dollars to fifty dollars tea, uh, sorry, wine, you might want to do pairings with cheese and this and that. If we have a three thousand dollar a bottle of wine, I want to see what the master did here, right? I don't right. want a cheese to do that. So very yeah, really good, really good. You know, one. so same with the jasmine mm. green tea. They usually use a uh, lower end tea, even though they could still produce a premium jasmine green tea. But the category itself kind of limits its uh, thing to a relative lower end. Uh, tea product right and does that make any sense no that makes great sense and it's fascinating I really I wanted to mention that this whole part got me pretty excited because it seems um, I don't know why it's we always recognize scented tea as a tea category but I always felt like because it's scented green scented black scented oolong scented dark that it was just really dark oolong black and green scented. But in the case with this, ja at least with jasmine green, now mm -hmm. it starts to sound like, I don't want to say it like, like it's, it, it's a yellow tea, but it actually is a more, it's more chemically involved than I had thought big time. Big That's time. right. But also it's not, a, why it's not yellow tea and stuff is related to the uh, tea category definitions. A lot of people, like mm. a lot of we, mm. we talk about the category because so most of it, uh, our audience are like consumers, like just want to know the basics. So tea types classifications, we have the very simple versions, right. but it has a lot of meanings underneath right. that are not necessary. That's why no matter what process it goes through, it's not yellow tea, it's not a oolong tea, it's a green tea. Same with a right. dwarf. Right. It's not its own kind, no matter by which way you define that, right? It is, you can put that in green, you can put that in dark. It's not its own kind. Right. I, I think um, that reminded me of our tea classification 201 video. Mm -hmm. So I'll just, for those of you interested to dive into that aspect a little bit more, I'll put the link to both of those 101 and 201. Mm -hmm. um, especially for Eden, new, pretty new to tea. Those mm -hmm. might be really fun videos for you to kind of learn a bit about what is the difference between green, yellow, blue, and black, dark, and scented. Mm. Whew. I, Good missed, one. I missed one though. I'm sure of it. Mm. I'm not gonna and a little thing, I don't know if you guys know this. Let me, With, okay. I just want them to let me know if you, I just was so enwrapped, just loved this section because it really gives a depth and a, some kind of complexity or mm. 
I don't know, it's wrong to say, but legitimacy to, to scented tea, I'm going to think I'm going to dive into this category a little bit more aggressively in the future. Mm, I want to add two things. Oh, maybe later, uh, because here we talk about appreciation before drinking, right? Mm -hmm. He says the look, uh, the appearance of the tea, tight and slim and well proportioned. The color is a black brown and oily. So it's just a dark color, but um, I don't really? know if oily, <laughs> lustrous. Yeah, that, so we should describe that for <laughs> folks that are new, right? Oily is mm. not like um, like you put on too much suntan lotion oily. It's more mm. like to have a, a, a like a silky luster, <laughs> yes. which uh, the more yes. you look at leaf, the more you'll recognize the difference between dull and lustrous leaf. Mm. Uh, two things I want to add here. One is a sling. It's a really interesting. If you go through this book, you notice certain times that you they talk what slim is coming up over and over, tight and slim. Yes, but another kind of almost like opposite of this is a strong and sturdy. Mm. It's almost a some tea you want them slim. Right. It, how do I know it's not like a, a weak or a, okay. A, Thick kind of thing. Why is the other ones uh, you want that sturdy and stuff like that? Right. Those are mini giveaways of uh, what this grade of tea is. Because like I was talking that uh, jasmine green tea usually is a lower tea. When you have a lower grade green tea, we make it into jasmine green tea. So mm -hmm. what you don't want is really old part mature part of the plant. Right. So you might see those sturdy ones, the thick stands, the thick leaves, those are too old. So the mouth feel, right. the taste wouldn't be good. In this case, you want them quote unquote slain as the mini indication of mm. younger, tender parts of the room. Right. While we talk about buds, many people feel like, oh, buds has to be mini, has to be, that's not right. You want the sturdy ones, like mm. the strong ones in early spring. That's why usually slow grown. Mm. Mm. While in the later spring, in the summer, because the temperature high, they grow way faster and they're skinny and because the the whole plant is like a shooting out buds like crazy, mm. right? Really interesting phenomenon. So that's a mini mm. kind of a telling of a, this right. is the kind it's of sort of like hedging level. your bet. You know that this is not going to be the top grade of green tea, but you still want a decent grade of the green tea. And mm -hmm. here's how you identify it, right? Mm. You don't want those giant old mature leaf that are difficult to process and resist the processing. Yes. So another thing to add is a little bit about this uh, scenting process we call Xunzhu. It's not it's up here. Yeah. This paragraph didn't tell you exactly how it's mm. done, but it gave you some sense. You feel like, oh, it's not just the flower tea mixing together. That's sanded tea. Mm. Um, that's literally what I thought it was. I'm, right? I feel no, so... It's a very complicated. Let me just want to uh, confuse you a little bit <laughs> because things can be really simple and it can be really complicated mm. and detailed. So what they do is basically they need the tea itself, say a finished uh, dried tea, right? Mm -hmm. They want that to have a little bit uh, 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 dry, so that very dry, so you can absorb the flower better. So you got to uh, make that happen. Then you have to put flour. How much flour do you put? Right. Right. Mm. And uh, how long do you put? When tea and flour together, and then you temperature a little bit moisture to make that happen. Right. How do you prevent the tea doesn't change it to its flavor? How do you make right. sure it doesn't have that moldy or fermentation mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, kind of a flavor and it turns like a red liquor? Right. Right. At the same time, after you mix in, they are stirring that process. At certain times, the flour are used up. It gave up all its aroma. It's mm -hmm. done. It's time to sift it out. Right. So that's a process and good jasmine green teas go through several rounds, sifting it out, let the tea rest, do another round, wow. wetting and let it absorb and sift it out and dry because if you don't dry the teas, the tea will be spoiled. Right. So the good ones you can do three times, five times, seven times, it's all possible so that the tea when you taste it, it's not just uh, one, two brew. 
and right. uh, there's no more flavor. It's really full up of the it's aroma. It's really full, but mm. in the end, what I wanted to say is even though jasmine is a quote unquote low end most common tea, to do it is not simple and it's not just the tea flower mix done and or put uh, artificial flavors or natural flavors and it's done. No, the process takes a long time and in right. terms of detail, when to stop, how fast because with moisture and temperature is really sensitive right. with tea. You don't want to wreck it. You don't want any green tea have redness and you don't want the liquor is right, red. Right. Mm. That's what I, that's what shocked me about this section. Um, once more for me, what's the name of the process? The Xunzhi. I have Xunzhi. a character in Chinese. Mm. Uh, that character can be pronounced as a Xun, talking about the process of doing sanded tea or you can also pronounce it as a yin, which means like a basement ish kind of thing. We talk about wine storage, you talk about Oh cellar, like a like cellarish, the, undergroundish uh, uh. or stuff. Yeah. Mm. So it but when I read about how chemically involved this process was, that's kind of what fascinated me because that immediately made me like help me realize like, oh, as soon as you're introduced moisture to tea, you've got uh, problems like you need to deal with that you need to be like exactly what you, you said super careful you need to have control and know what you're doing yeah. I was talking about details if you lay them out if you lay them thick right tea flower you're trying the tea trying to absorb the flowers uh, aroma you lay them too thick they generate too much heat right tea is wrecked right. you lay them too thin it's too slow right you have to lay them observe them properly make right. adjustment like uh, it's a very technical thing right. if you want to produce even just a good mm, mm. jasmine tea. Yeah, and I haven't is... seen this process, but I mm. can imagine just from watching other producers having made green tea or yellow tea or oolong tea is there's a lot of walking around, touch the leaf, smell the leaf, feel the leaf, how wet is it, how warm is it? Mm -hmm. Like the producers are they're fully engaged with this process and mm -hmm. right, you know, they need to be because delicate it is super fascinating yeah now we so, wanted to go back didn't we yes just so. want to point out Chinese standard tea is not mixed two things together shake and done which I have to admit that's where I was before this that's why I was so excited at the beginning because I realized this is really something else even though right it has that little bad reputation I feel like it's not really fair yeah yes so go back next I want to talk about this talk real and counterfeit and uh, why this tea is what we're having here, though it has flour, it's still the top a supreme grade. Top supreme. grade. Mm. This is almost this is the only sanded green tea, uh, sanded tea in China that has this name that shock everybody, every tea tasters. And uh, you, this tea is called what shocked them? The name? No, this tea is oh the, the tea when they taste it they're like whoa yes. Okay. So uh, first, to talk about this, a little basic about this tea. It's called Xu Gong Cha. Xu Gong is uh, the gentleman who invented this process. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might also know as uh, Bi Tan Piao Xue. Mm. So the green tea with the jasmine flower there. So you yes. can see the name Su Gong Cha there with Bi Tan Piao Xue. Bi Tan Piao Xue is scrolling the, off the screen the rapidly. Other name. Why this has this name is because his uh, tea was so beautiful that there was a, a, a writer who made a whole po poem for him because to vis uh, describe this tea visually because it's a green leaf on the bottom and a, a white flower on mm. the top, so it's called a Bi Tan Piao Xue. Mm. However, just like Jin Jun Mei, uh, early times people don't have that copyright or uh, right. uh, uh, what's the other one, like a trademark. Trademark, trademark, trademark. and copyright was uh, didn't have loose, that. Right? Then mm. you have all the uh, counterfeits, you know, the duplicators. Or they... duplicators, mm. right? So making that, so uh, that's why you can see it's actually Pelsi kind of there. I shouldn't be so mean it's mm -hmm. actually a form of flattery they, the tea yes. was so good people want to imitate it that's they right. want to try it and see yes. oh can I do but that but only this tea can be called as Xu Gong Cha mm. is because he is Xu Gong he made it so mm. Bi Tan Piao Xue everybody can have that name but this made by him himself and mm -hmm. his family entirely by hand 
It's just like a, and, if I say don't go too fast. I don't to want to repeat our, that because okay. you said that really quick. Entirely by hand. So remember that sifting process, right? So pulling all the, it's just amazing. Like they, uh, okay, go ahead. I just want to make sure that was stressed because that's not every green tea and that's not the definition of a good tea. It doesn't have to be made by hand, but mm. to be made by hand is something very special. Yes. So, sorry. Then in the book previously, if we can pull up that, yep, we'll head back I think there. it will help people remember <laughs> what's what re <laughs> the real sentence means it went through Xunzhi process, means it goes through all those generating and it doesn't have flour in it, sifting out, uh, absorbing, properly absorbing the aroma of mm -hmm. flowers. The fake one means it didn't go through this Xunzhi process. What it does is kind of like buy those used up flowers and just put it in, mm -hmm. in the tea yep. and say, this is what sanded soup look like. Cause there's a real flower. You can see real things in right, it, right. but actually when you brew it up, it doesn't have much flavor because mm. that flower was used, mm -hmm. uh, in previous process already. Right. But that lowers the cost, right? It's similar okay. like uh, people uh, buy those uh, brewed tea leaf. Like after it's brewed oolong, brewed oolong, buy those roasted heavily sell as rock tea. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people think, oh, rock tea must be very, very. Yeah, I think we should even expand that a bit. I don't think okay. people generally know that that <laughs> happens, but. Uh... But we've had experiences where the we've, dirtiness of Chinese tea market, <laughs> right? We've had experiences where somebody has a really bold rock tea, and when we taste it, it's it's, it's empty. It doesn't have anything except the smoke. The roast, the roast, the re-roast is all yeah. that was breathing life into it. So this is a, just to make sure that you understand the metaphor. Similarly, yes, we want with to the confuse you tea. a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so with the scented tea, mm. with those old dry flowers just thrown in, you see those beautiful flowers. You think, oh, well, how nice their aroma won't be there. And, uh... Yes. Well, at the same time, if you look at those uh, teas and the one that uh, we have as a Xu Gong Cha, you say, oh, both of them have flowers. Why is this not bad one? Right. Good the one. The answer is when you brew them, they taste absolutely different. Mm. But on the other hand, when you see the dry leaves, it also this tea uses the tender buds. Mm -hmm. the finest green tea to do rather than that. And when you uh, brew it up, how many infusions I did throughout I've still had, works. Yeah. It's still delivering jasmine flavor and green tea flavor. Yes. So as it says here, there is no real fragrance and it, it's a little confusing. I don't know if we mm. sorted this out fully. So there's no real fragrance on the dry leaf and then you brew it and there's no real fragrance in the liquor, in the mouthfeel on the nose yes. of the brewed liquor. Yes. This is, completely opposite here. The, mm -hmm. the dry leaf has a sweet summery jasmine aroma that make you almost cry. If at least if you're stuck here in the Canadian winter. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, when you sip the liquor, you've got, and like you mentioned, we're on, we've just been adding water, adding water, adding mm -hmm. water, and it's still rich green tea flavor, rich jasmine aroma still after several fill ups, I'm drinking about down to a little bit more than half the guy mm -hmm. want. So I'm putting in, there's, I've had at least three guy one of tea, uh, two and a half, three. I'm going to try and be careful. Yeah. I was, I don't remember. On the other hand is, as we mentioned, Jasmine green tea, you use a lower grade green tea. Mm. Why it's, it's easier to do. It doesn't wreck the flavor and everything. Oh. While well, this tea, uh, Xu Gong Cha oh. uses top grade, uh, so buds. I've You're lost, so dizzy. Huh? I lost control of the camera. I want you to show them the tea and then I meant to go back, but then you held up the glass. Oh, I was like, oh, oh that sorry. I don't good. know. I wasn't here, here. You can see the flower there. I think it's this side. I should block. Yeah, don't block the flower though. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See how yeah, I ate most of them. Same There's here. only just I'm, one left. I'm, I'm completely out of flowers. But if I you look at those leaves, those are tender buds. Mm. It's almost like a ginger may. The inventor, mm. Mr. Jam, uses buds for black tea. Before mm -hmm. that, most uh, black teas are still using lower parts. Same with this one. As a green tea, you will use lower parts, but he successfully used buds mm. to make this. And when you taste it, it fits in what's a, a good green tea mm -hmm. taste for, yeah. uh, for Chinese tasting grade Chinese tea standards. And throughout those Xunzhi flowers, uh, Faces, because those faces would be really 
devastating to bust. Right. And it would turn that to the darker side to the Right, and more... you can see from our the liquor color as well, it's not that, that golden yellow that we often see in scented tea. Yes. It's still a clear green tea liquor color. That's why when so it came out and to all the Chinese tea tasters, it was mind blowing. It's, mm. You perfectly combine the tenderness, the freshness, the brisk, that xian of the buds. Yes. Well, yeah. still go through the whole process. The jasmine is there as right. well, balanced all together and uh, so lasting, mm -hmm. so lingering. And it fits in the tasting profile as a tasting grade tea rather than a jasmine tea. Right. No, and it's amazing. Not to mention, we didn't even mention to them yet that the another complication is when is the green tea ready? When is that plump, young, tender green tea ready? Spring. When is jasmine flower coming? Summer. So he managed to do that too and keep oh, that fresh, yes. and right? All the uh, not petal, but the bitter part of the fl flower. The sepals. I, th I believe they're called the sepal. sepal? S e p a l. Yeah, because those are super bitter, astringent, not very yummy. You're gonna. F oh, let me I'm go gonna... to the camera so they can watch you go fishing. Yeah. Oh, I, I went to know. the book by accident. <laughs> You're I'm... so dizzy. <laughs> so stick that right. So there is the flower. Would that help? Yeah, that's great. So you see, you this is a whole flower. It's just because it's wet. It doesn't. I easily open, but. Lower oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. So you see, it's a whole flower except the inside that. Uh, so at the base of the flower, you would normally have that little green, little opposite of a hat. It goes at the bottom of the flower, the sepal. Oh, you can even see it here, this picture in the book. I'm going to go to the book because there's a good picture of oh, sep cool, yeah. sepal right there. I'll just highlight yeah. them. These are, yeah. these little brown things yeah. here are the sepals. They're and removed. And with the inside of the, uh, where all the pollen, so those little Right, the stamen or whatever. Yeah, those I'm not, I might be getting the words all wrong, but you can. All of the flowers to have us. many bitterness and mm. uh, astringency. If you if you brew a lot of like uh, herbal teas, they are minor of those. Really, it's all. Manual. So they've really gone to great lengths. <laughs> you, <laughs> they've really <laughs> no gone to <laughs> to great lengths to uh to make sure uh, the liquor, the yeah. finished tea, the whole the whole package, the the flower aroma, the tea aroma, everything together is delightful. Mm. Um, full, but not bitter, not astringent, uh, aromatic, uh, thick, sien. Uh, you get the umami. The more you know the process of tea, you know, the, the more astonishing yeah, it is yeah, to you. Totally. That's why to I was so look at this tea. Out. Otherwise, mm. if it's a jasmine tea, like mm -hmm, I can mm -hmm. have that in a Chinese restaurant. Why right, am I right. getting this, right? All right, so let's... I hope uh, that answers... Uh, no, that was fantastic. I mean, yeah. I just love this section. Give us a shout out. <laughs> shout out if, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're loving this. This is really, I was just blown away by this. We're going to head over to the comments now, guys. Mm. I've seen lots of uh, chat. We've got a little behind here. Let me see what's going on. Where were we? Oh, boy. Wow. Goji just seems to me not taste at all like Puar. Okay, there's some talk. Reduced leaf amount and temperature. It's better. Oh. That's good. Cindy, surprisingly lavender. Oh, here. Surprisingly lavender, I believe is. Right. Actually so, originated from... Arabian Peninsula. Arabian mm. Peninsula. Which is super unexpected because I think France is what popularized it in the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. But the, the, the kind of a climate makes sense there. Cindy, I'm glad to hear that reducing the leaf amount and the water temperature was able to give you a better sip. Mm -hmm. um, Beirong says that in Iran they use bourrage with black tea and dried limes. I don't know what bourrage is, but that... Sounds inter sounds fascinating. Very intense acid and floral flavor. Ooh, mm. oh, that would be interesting. A little tart. Time signature says goi sha cha tea to me does not taste at all like puar, which surprised me. Oh, this mm -hmm. is the Japanese mm -hmm. dark mm -hmm. tea. It has more of a savory taste. Ah, uh, that doesn't surprise me in the sense that it's Japanese with both sour and sweet notes. Might be because of the unique two-step fermentation. Yes, uh -huh. possible. Very interesting. Johnny Lloyd, is the transition supposed to be a video? <laughs> Manual video. <laughs> Which one? I don't know. I don't get a written version. Is the translation? I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what you're asking, Johnny. Maybe you could clarify. But mm. the, uh, the translation um, in the link down below is just a link there. Oh, I know what you're asking now, I think. 
Uh, the translation in the link below will take you to our website, which will have this video once it's done. But it also, if you scroll down and scroll mm -hmm. down, you'll find the translated text in various sections and you'll be able to follow along. Yeah, um, just great in question. case you want to watch mm -hmm. the video and still listen and go through the text, so we put yeah. the video on the Yeah, the, the web page is kind of for all time and mm -hmm. all the episodes are there. So if, you're, if you want to go back and review or anything or just quickly read it, you have the option to see the video or just scroll down and read the text. Great question. I'm going to be more specific when mm, I talk about mm. that. That's a decent question because yes. you do have to scroll down a bit. Time signature, uh, which combines, okay, back to the Japanese dark tea, combines the aerobatic fungal fermentation and anaerobic bacterial fermentation. Overall, the tea reminds me a lot of different types of Asian cuisine, very different from Puar, but good. Mm. Time signature, biochemical. Oh, maybe that would have been a good word for the uh, chemical yes. and biological yes. process. Yes. Yes. Great one, time signature. Thank That's you. what we were looking That's for. Beirang, are you on Discord? If so, I'm wondering if you can advise me about the use of a coffee teapot I have from Syria. Oh, that's great. That's what Discord's all about. You guys can get together and exchange questions and knowledge and culture and pictures. I'm looking forward to see all your tea setups. If you're if you joined later and you're just sitting and enjoying this pot, uh, enjoying the stream. This podcast. Yeah, yeah, I almost said that. <laughs> Grab a click of your setup, no matter how basic. We just love to see how, what are you sipping and how do you sip it while you're enjoying the stream. It'd just be fun for us to kind of be able to see what's going on on your side. And I know mm -hmm. a few of you have already uploaded those photos, so thank you so much. I can't wait to jump on and, and check those out, but yeah. Um, and let me just show you the link to the Discord, if you're not part of it, is down below or the invite is right there. So um, you, can, uh, you can jump on and do that mm -hmm. if you wish. With jasmine green, should jasmine flavor or tea flavor be more dominant? I think we've kind of covered that now. Ideally balanced. Yeah, you want, just like a lot of things in tea, you want them to be cooperating. Like that choir metaphor, I thought that was so beautiful. <laughs> um, you want to hear all the voices and you want to hear them and you want them to be in unison. Not like a train station. <laughs> that was such a great metaphor. Time signature, I don't drink dot 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 wine, mm -hmm. but you do drink tea. And Lolo says, jasmine flowers, best pick before noon, exhaust their fragrance overnight and have to be exchanged for several times, as far as I know. I see you nodding, so I think yeah. that's, I can't comment. Usually for us to have uh, any flowers, you want that before noon because it's a full bloom. Once mm. it's a bloom, it, get, it lose you some. Start to get, you yeah. want to you catch want that, that giving that almost off. there, that's mm. the perfect set. Right, that it's a fully developed, mm. but not giving out yet. Right, right. That you want to catch that chemical process Sandwich we talked rose. about. Yeah. Right. This section is very interesting. Maybe I will give scented teas more of a chance. That's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. I'll try to keep an open mind. Yes. And, and you know, it's understandable. As we said earlier, right, they tend to be because of the nature of them. They tend to not be made with the best material in China. Remember, the book is from a Chinese perspective. Mm. What does that mean for us in the West? It's even worse, to be frank, in general. So look hard. Trusted vendor, all that jazz, and make sure it's a good value sip. I don't want to be too hard, but if you think it's a good deal, it's a good deal, kind of thing. Okay, just say that. <sighs> Eden O'Brien, loving this section because my first tea love was jasmine tea. Started drinking it when I was nine years old and became obsessed. I used to say it's like drinking a bouquet. Mm. Total, and this sip we're having right now, I to, it's, it is just like drinking a bouquet of jasmine. But it's so nice of you to share your story with us. And it, it's a lot of it's people's lot of experience, people's, yeah. I think. I love that when I was a kid, summer, yeah. to have jasmine tea is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a whole world out there to explore. So mm. that is exciting. Jubaijia, as an engineer, of course, I'm hooked on process. Yes, <laughs> I have the same affliction, Jubaijia. As an engineer, I get really into it and sometimes ask, at a certain point as a tea drinker, there's a lot I don't need to know about the process, but I'm just kind of fascinated by it. So sometimes I ask too many questions, don't I? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you get a little no, bit No, I don't take, because I don't treat you as just a tea lover. I no, I'm I pro. I have to dig in. I have to dig in, but sometimes... And sometimes the direction of my question is a little off because I'm looking at those really technical things, but I need to be looking at the overall quality, flavor, and of the tea. But anyway, it's interesting. I get hooked on that too. Used to drink a lot of flavored. So time signature, I used to drink a lot of flavored and scented tea, but I've gravitated towards enjoying the six types in their pure quote unquote forms. Well, except yellow tea, which is difficult to find where I live. Mm. Mm. Shameless plug, check out our website. We have some great yellow teas. I think I'm allowed to do that, right? 
Uh, and Eden says, Ju, I'm so with you. I have an education in the arts and so much of the philosophy of my training was all about the process. Make this art, engineering and tea. Yes. Mm. Yeah, tea is a lot like painting or uh, yes. uh, photography. It has a that... lot of, uh, yes, it's mm. really similar. Mm. You have, I, yeah, I think I, I might use that more because a lot of times, the other day I was trying to say like the T, kind of explain the T in terms of the spectrum. I think the art is a really good mm. form. Like, you know, our kids could doodle something and say we're like, oh, what a wonderful artist. Right, we right. know it's not, right? Like you're not going into a gallery and sell that. So it doesn't have a real thing. It's just mm. lovely. And that's our stand on people drinking tea. As long as you love it, you really don't care. Mm. But in terms of... Uh, professional in terms of stuff right, right. there are basic if you really learn art there is university for that there is right, basic right. theory light shade stuff you have to learn mm, mm. so it's really similar and it's not so open to interpretation people right. can have what they love but christie's is not going to judge based on what i love because i'm nobody in mm. art uh, like auction big oh, auction, oh, right, right, uh, right. A real art auction, art, right? Yes, artists, the major artists, the galleries, the stuff. There is some industry agreement, especially in Chinese tea. Oh wow! So uh, that's mm. that's really interesting, and it's kind of related to Time Signature's comment, where he goes back to saying there's so much variation to explore in the pure forms of tea, especially because I like teas from a lot of different countries. I mm. might go back to exploring scented teas at some point. Mm. As a linguist, I really enjoy getting all this information on process and the culture. And the cultural hinterland as well. Super fascinating. Yeah, I, I yeah. have to agree. It is, um, for me, the pure forms, I, there is so much to explore there. It almost mm. is overwhelming. Just in Oolong, you could be dive into Oolong for years and years and, and be still finding new and exciting um, profiles. And Zhu Bai Jia says, is that uh, Su Gong Cha Bi Tan Kiao Su? Yes. I think we answered it. No Canadian writers in f winters in Florida. Most years, just Canadians here in winter. Yes, I guess you're. <laughs> I guess you're not seeing as many of them, but apparently there's still plenty of them flocking down, according to our news reports. Yes, we call them snowbirds. So yes. flocking is what they do. I just love when you say that. Yes, Cindy, I have some dried Siberian rosebuds which oh. I've tried using in tea, but were too strong for me. Are they meant to be put in whole or just a few small petals? Well, you can put one or two full whole ones. Usually, uh, again, I don't know much about the uh, uh, Siberian rose, but but mm. we drink a rose, uh, rose tea, rose just rose tea a lot, infusion. and depends mm. on the cultivars and the stuff. Some of them you put a couple of them, like a one bud, two bud, it's beautiful the whole cup. If mm. you put too much, it's a, it has a that rose astringent and stuff right, like that. Right, right, really good. Oh. Speaking of which, I didn't talk much. I don't know if you guys care. Just so quickly, just talk about uh, flower teas, about the uh, health benefit. I know many people are talk, you know, drink herbal teas for that. Uh, most of flower teas are really good for you. Like the the Dai Dai Hua is good for people who have like a stomach reflux kind of thing. Acid help, reflux. Yeah, mm, right. help calming that. Not like pregnant type reflux. Different. Then mm. roses are really oh, good for those of you who are having stressful lifestyle or if especially ah. it's a really woman's tea because we have period every month and it mm -hmm. uses a lot of blood and stuff. So it helps ease the pre period syndrome. Premenstrual syndrome. PMS. Mm, yeah, mm. it helps ease that. Uh, but almost all flowers have that uh, releasing kind of a um, uh, certain characters that if you just recover from big disease surgeries or you are naturally a pretty weak person don't drink too much of those if you notice you have been drinking like rose teas for the every day for a couple of months and you used to hike in the same trail and nothing else changes but you feel like you're a little bit out of breath it could be because right. of that right mm. right so um just back to the comments, um, Cindy, no, Eden says it's so funny to hear this information when we were talking about how the dried teas are typically removed from a decent mm. tea, how, to see, hear this information and see so many large corporate tea companies in the States brag about the high content of dried flowers. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think in the end, it's not about uh, 
there are many things we can help us identify them. But again, like I always say, no matter what they tell you, no matter what, you sip it. Yeah. Right? It's not like and said. Some people said, oh, this uh, jasmine tea goes through seven times the Xunzhi process mm. or three times not as good. But in the end, if it's not done it well, seven times, 70 times, I don't care. It's not a good tea. Right. Taste is what matters. And also, they may be using a completely alternative process. They might not even be using a Xun. Yeah, it's a lot it of called? work. Yeah, uh, more than likely they're a lot just of throwing flowers just in the put tea. them together and mm. shake them. Shake them up, uh, more like a blend. Mm. Uh, all right, so Cindy, your tea looks much nicer in your glass than mine. Obviously, better quality. This is yeah, it's this is a really really great. Uh, like we said, it's a supreme tea in our lineup. So it is a it's a treat for us today. I'm really enjoying. Yeah, it. we had a couple of treats recently. Um, Lolo says. Uh, Toss a couple chrysanthemum blossoms on puar adds a wonderful freshness. Yes, is, that's is, what Cantonese people love the most. <laughs> po, po, po. <laughs> What's that? Uh, chrysanthemum puar. Uh -huh. And Jubajie says, I hope we don't have to sing the Moli Hua jasmine flower song. Uh, you I, and uh, Stella sing that the other time. Oh, that Stella is, taught me that yes, a little yes. bit. Awesome. Oh, I, I'll, I'll learn it for next time. I probably won't, so don't hold me to that. <laughs> Fernanda, yes, lovely section. Cindy, so I should not include the sepals of the rosebuds. Mm, I don't know what to say to that. I don't know if they'll come I don't, off I don't move, remove them because they're Tricky. stuck to it once yeah. they're fully dried like that. Yeah. You can, you know what, do a side by side. Try with and without if you can mm. get them off, but you know, don't, don't, don't like hurt yourself or wreck the rose. Eden says, on my third proper steeping, technically fourth, first was too weak to really taste, of this Taeguanyin cake. Absolutely lovely. Johnny Boy, that's awesome. I love to hear your tasting notes, guys. I don't want to gloss over it too quick, but love to share your, and thank you, Emmett, uh, Time Signature MMA for sharing those. Everybody share your tasting notes. I love to hear that. Mm. Um, Johnny, I think we're about to hit the two hour mark, LOL. Oh boy, we're at 147 right now. We'll try and step it up. It has that classic, Eden says it has that classic Taeguanian Lilac Orchid floral note, but equally, with a matcha bamboo taste, finishes off cool and fresh. Wow, great tasting note. Cindy, Jen Tea does have some great yellow teas. Dalia Tsing and Huang Da Cha, I, I'll plug them for you. Thank you, Cindy, <laughs> Thank appreciate you, that. Cindy. Saves me. So you've got a, you've got a, too shy. <laughs> you've got an independent reference there. Ju Baiji, a minor on the way. Oh yeah, that's right. Let us know when they arrive. That's awesome. Hopefully next week we'll sip them together. Mm -hmm. All right, we're not done yet. We have a little bit more to go. Back to the book. It's a marathon scented tea session. Whoa, sorry about scrolling. I hope I didn't make anybody seasick. Oh, let's just look at those. Those are so pretty. Before, after. Okay, you get the idea. Nice. All right, sculpting scented tea. <clears throat> sculpting scented tea is made by hands. It is different from scented tea, which is to bind the dry flower and tea together. Being sculpted, flower isn't in tea and tea, oh, sorry, flower is in tea and tea is in flower. It is extremely for viewing, but in poor taste. <laughs> that sounds weird. Brew sculpting scented tea generally by beautiful glass sets which are endurable of heat. Brew with boiling water and wait for the tea and the flowers are blooming. And just a couple more beautiful pictures. Ayo, sorry guys, my mouse finger is I think that's good. I think we can cover yeah. that. Just, sh that's just th showing the pictures. It's really pretty. Right. So these are your blooming teas, right? Mm. Um, so they're made by hand. I think here it's um, it's extremely for viewing, but in poor taste just means they're more they're to look good. at. They're yes. not going to be your delicious tea, right? Yes. Okay. And um, I think other than that, everything was good. But this in poor taste means uh, if you have that, you're, you're kind of, um, it's not cool. So oh. that's why I clarified that. It doesn't, it doesn't reflect that it doesn't that. taste good. It means it's kind of, I think it's obvious to everybody that that's not what was meant, but, mm. but literally translated, this, is, this means it would be like um, only nasty people would do that. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> right? know that. Because it's in poor taste, like um, oh. you know, driving on the wrong side of the road is in poor taste or, um, you oh, know, really? yeah, it means socially unacceptable kind of. Ah, uh, not I that it really tastes didn't bad. Know that. Yeah, no. 
Mm. It just means it wouldn't taste so good. Like it's still drinkable and everything. Like it's a good beverage. It's just not a tasting great mm. tea. Kind and of I'll thing. go through them again because they're so mm. pretty. They're, and they have their own name. Okay. They have their own name. Yeah, like a different shape, a different style. So they have their oh, different right. names. Oh right, like here. Like this a, is the uh, blah blah blah, <laughs> aka Rich Bloom. I didn't mean blah blah yeah. blah. But you yeah, know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yes. Okay, is there another sec? Oh, here we go. Let's hit this section here. Flower. Did I miss anything? Everything good? Yes, everything's good. Great. I, I think I missed this section. That's anyway, okay. last section. Flower and grass tea. Although flower and grass tea is named tea, in fact, it is flower and grass, which can be drunk only or mixed with brewed tea. The well-brewed flower and grass tea should be settled alone for three to five minutes. Then it can be drunk. Oh, mm. this is kind of what we were just talking about. Mm. So this is what this is more like this if you throw the rosebuds tizen. in the water. This is tizen. This is more now we translate as mm. tizen. And right. grass is because just Chinese say that, but it's not mean grass. It means <laughs> like herbal tea, like right. You know, like leaf, any leaf, leaf stuff. Like mint. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mint tea mint. would cover a grass tea because it's yes. not a flower; it's a leaf. Mm. But a chrysanthemum would be a, a flower-based herbal infusion. Mm -hmm. So you differentiate based on is it a flower or is it a rooibos grass tea? Or you tea. can mix mm. together, like you use some right, right. Uh, herbal teas, Chinese uh, medicine, those herbs uh, right, together right. for certain purpose. Yeah. The most famous one is uh, chrysanthemum and uh, goji berry. All the coders have one cup, so they don't go blind. <laughs> Like computer right. use, intensive computer use. Right, right. Like uh, it's great for eye. Right. And they say here, as we were just talking, right, you can have them by themselves or you can mix them with your tea, like we were saying. Mm -hmm. Throw some of those, um, uh, was it osmanthus with the puar? Mm. Mm. So there you go. So you've got strawberry flowers. Mm -hmm. Oh, so pretty. Rose, etc. All right, and we will skip over that. I think that That's covers it. it. That's the next. Uh... So here's our next week, guys. Everybody can read that. No, <laughs> cleaning the sets. Here we go. After all the brewing. So uh, how to keep your teaware? So Eden, you've got some brand new teaware. We're gonna cover how to keep it in tip-top form next week, guys. Let me head back here. Ooh. That was our. Um, that was that covers all of section two. Okay, we've gone over green, white, yellow, oolong, black, dark tea, Hold scented tea. tea, tons of different types. Uh, they're all back on our webpage. If you want to go back and check out the video, our webpage has a Sunday tea book section where you can refer back to the the finished, the updated translation. I like to call it over mm -hmm. and over as you need. As I say about this book, it is a great reference. You can go back as a, as, a new, as a new person to tea. It's got great information for you. As an experienced tea drinker, it's got great information to refresh and to give you a new perspective as you learn more about tea. There's nuance in this book. Mm. You'll learn more and more. Uh, let's just say, make sure we don't miss any comments. Mm. Um, Jubhajia has some on the way. Time Signature MMA says, thanks for mentioning the health benefits. It was the mm. health benefits that made me a more serious tea drinker. Ah, cool. That's one of the great things. I want to focus on that for a minute because I always, uh, while we're interested in the health benefits, like at Gen T in general, we, we don't ignore them. We also don't overstate them or emphasize them. I think the greatest health benefit of tea is that uh, it can attract people like yourself, time signature, to drinking it, and then the flavor keeps you drinking it. It's an mm. easy, there's a Western concept that healthy should be painful and not delicious. I think I find that, you know. Kale, I'm not a friend of kale. You know what I mean? Um, healthy, <laughs> when I grow kale. healthy, it's a waste of space in the dirt. Healthy <laughs> doesn't have to be unpleasant. And tea is a great testament to that. So I just wanted to say, I'm glad that drew you in and I'm glad the flavor's keeping you here because I think that's uh, awesome. Uh, Lolo loved the pitchers. It was blooming teas were delightful. Simmerjeet, I love some blooming peach tea. Ooh, mm. I want to try that. I we rarely drink blooming tea, but it is fun to watch. Uh, we sh uh, anyway, I gotta I'll find get you some. some. Yeah, get me some. Yeah, Cindy says I agree about the blooming teas. Most of the ones I've tried are pretty, but not the best taste. I've never even considered brewing my rosebuds alone without tea. Interesting. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna tell them your little thing too because I love that. I don't know That's if you guys. Thing. Her little thing is this. She doesn't even know. She has rosebuds. I don't know if we have any right now, and we haven't had it in a while, but I think once this spring comes back, with she throws a couple, she does a little thing. Maybe we'll do a video about it, but she makes 
basically toner for your face. Oh, sorry, I bumped the table. On the face, right? After you wash your face, you put a bit of toner, then you put your lotion. She makes her own with Rosebud and it is awesome. It's my favorite toner. We're using... Great aftershave. Yeah, it's really good, guys. It's I don't know if you're open-minded. It's great aftershave too. It's uh, not gonna sting, but it's gonna sort of soothe your skin, then put on your lotion, everything's gold. So you could use it for that too, Cindy, just saying. Um, so, so Time Signature says, so flower and grass tea is a kind of type of herbal tea. Yeah, I think we explained that. It was confusing, but That's it's basically- That's just Chinese way of saying herbal tea. Yeah, tisane. So, it, and by, but just be to say grass means those leafy ones, flower is the flower one. So like mint, rooibos, uh, I don't know what else doesn't have a flower is grass. <laughs> Cindy says, thanks for a great session. Always, as always, gong hei fat choy and happy Valentine's Day. Gong good hei one, good fat one. choy. Anyway, time signature says, dude, I love kale. Oh, that's okay. You can have all of mine, time signature. <laughs> all of my kale, I'll send it your way. It's okay. <laughs> um, yes, MMA. Oh, yeah, yeah, all of it. you all like kale. That's great. Oh, sorry, I bumped the table again. Earthquake, whoa. Jubaizia, I'm with Phil. Yeah. <laughs> and engineers don't like kale. Engineers. Josh says, I couldn't agree more about the kale. Good, good. Okay, we can have, let's go on the Discord. We'll continue the kale debate on Discord. I'm going to start a poll on Discord. I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to figure it out. We're going to have a poll. We're going to do a kale off on Discord. So join us on the Discord side. Let me flip over to that view. The link's down below if you're not in the Discord and you want to be. Love to see a picture of your tea setup when you're enjoying Sunday Tea Book. Um, we had a great time, guys. We're going to be back next week with episode 34 into the next section, which is caring for your tea set. Um, you guys are awesome. We really appreciate you hanging out for this marathon, nearly two hour live stream. The marathon, yes. Yes, send some <laughs> yellow tea along with the uh, kale. Uh, a? Thanks, guys. Send some yellow tea along with the kale, A. Eh? Yes, yes. We'll do. Whatever Jen does for her skin is obviously works well. Mm. I showed <laughs> off my skin last week, but I think it's time for her to thank shine. You. Yes, it's working great. Guys, thank you very much. Um, did I miss anything? I think we said oh, everything. Oh, one last thing. If you're interested in a uh, giveaway, giveaway. Uh, we're having tea uh, giveaway. Tea giveaway on Insta Instagram. Mm. Uh, we're giving away mm. full size 25 grand Baya Qilan, uh, Inghong number, number 9, and uh, Huang Da Cha. So Huang that Cha. applies Three. to people Three. who live in Canada and, and the, the USA. US. So, so the full rules are. Uh, in Instagram, so if you're interested, and those are our top three sales of 2020. Mm -hmm. Whew, so, I can't believe it's 2021. Anyways, right? So if you're interested in you try it or those teas you really enjoy and would love to have some free ones, yep. feel free to join the giveaway. Yeah, jump onto event. Instagram, join the giveaway. Um, if I can put a link in the description down below, I will, but I don't know how Instagram works. I'm not that tech savvy with Instagram. I, I have a real love hate with Instagram, mostly like in the kale zone, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so um, my kale zone, not yours, time signature, um, which is fine, which is fine. I'm not, and if you like Instagram, that's all fine too, but you know where I stand now. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys all jump in on the giveaway because we would love to give, you guys are the best. You're always with us. We love having you around. So until next time, keep, keep steeping. steeping.